Hello and welcome to worship with members of Haywards Heath and Burgess Hill Methodist Churches. We gather for worship on the fourth Sunday in Lent, which is also Mothering Sunday. Added to that, this Sunday I'm actually going to be leading worship in a church building near to where I grew up. And so this service does also have a bit of a church anniversary feel to it as well. As we begin our worship, we begin with a prayer from the Methodist Worship Book for Mothering Sunday. So let us pray. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, strengthen us each day that in joy and sorrow we may know your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we sing our opening hymn, God is here as we his people meet to offer praise and prayer. We hear now the first of our two Bible readings, hearing from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints, and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone in him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually 
into a dwelling place for God. And we then hear from John chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 19, and it is part of the account of Jesus and the Samaritan woman when they meet at the well in Sychar. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we sing our next hymn, Speak, O Lord. Thank you. 
So let us pray. May I speak in your name, and may we all hear your words to us this day, O God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We were reflecting a little last week about how our buildings might communicate all sorts of things to us. The location of the pulpit and the communion table, for example, might tell us which of these elements of worship was considered of greater importance at the time when the, the building was built or redecorated. Our buildings are not just important for their architectural features, though. They are the vessels of stories, of prayers, of hopes and dreams, of joy and grief over many years. One of the suggested origins of Mothering Sunday is that it was an opportunity for workers, particularly those in domestic service, to return to their families and their mother church prior to Easter. I wonder, where do you consider your mother church to be? Is it the one you attend or are connected to now? Or is it another? If it is elsewhere, do you know if it still exists? What memories of that place and community do you hold? Those buildings in which our faith was nurtured and we were loved and encouraged are important. It can be very easy these days to dismiss their value. However, I would guess that none of us discovered faith and then grew in faith completely detached from a particular place and community. Therefore, those places can hold special places within our hearts and our memories, and they should be rightly cherished. God can continue to speak to us and strengthen us as we relive those memories. As we remember those places, it often isn't just the building that we remember, but the people who were there as well. For these places that we celebrate have been home to generations of saints, some that we know and some that we haven't, but all have been important for the ongoing witness to God's love. In picturing in our minds those buildings that have nurtured our faith, we remember those people who have done the nurturing through their love, their teaching, their preaching, their praying, through the time they have given just to listen. In this holy remembering, we understand what Paul was encouraging the church in Ephesus to recognise, that their identity was wrapped up with those generations who had gone before. We don't come fashioning something new, forgetting our past. Instead, we build upon the legacy that we have inherited and discover that we are all part of one united people of God, citizens of God's kingdom, before any other aspect of our belonging. When we tell the story of God, we tell not just our bit and the bit in the Bible, but the whole story. When we remember those who have gone before us, we do so remembering that they are still with us, still part of God's church, now cheering us on. However, though we are to celebrate our past and our buildings, we are not to be constrained by them. In most cases, the worshipping community existed long before the building we now inhabit. Our story seeps out from our buildings and flows through the present into the future. When the Samaritan woman encountered Jesus, she asked about where the correct place to worship was. Jesus didn't deny the value of either Jerusalem or the mountain in Samaria, but pointed beyond either place of worship. The important factor isn't the precise location, but the spirit in which we seek to encounter and worship God. The story of the church stretches beyond our buildings as people express worship in their love, 
care and standing for justice. So, as in the words of the hymn, may we praise God for all that is past and trust God for all that is to come. Amen. And so we sing our next hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above. come to our prayers for God's church and world. When I say the words God of all ages, I invite you to join in the response, hear our prayer. God of all ages, hear our prayer. So let us pray. We pray for your church here and around the world. We pray for our part of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church that is the Methodist Church in Britain. May we find ways to celebrate all that has been, but to build on this, build on it for this our generation. May your whole church be witnesses of good news who seek to love and welcome all as all are made in your image. God of all ages, hear our prayer. We pray for the communities in which our churches are situated. We pray for our local schools and colleges, for our doctors' surgeries, dentists and hospitals for those who make our communities more pleasant places to live by tending public spaces, collecting rubbish or cleaning our streets. God of all ages, hear our prayer. We pray for our Parliament and for those who seek to be elected there later this year. We pray also for those seeking election elsewhere in our world. 
we pray especially for the elections in the United States of America, Russia, Ukraine and India. God of all ages, hear our prayer. We pray for those we know who are struggling at this time because of grief, illness or anxiety. May they be surrounded by your love and light. God of all ages, hear our prayer. We thank you for those saints who have gone before us. May their lives continue to inspire us. And may we always remember we are part of one united church. God of all ages, hear our prayer. All these prayers we offer through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine with that chorus that says, This is my story, this is my song, praising my Saviour all the day long. So go as citizens of God's heavenly kingdom of light, 
united with all God's people from every time and place, and go with the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, with you and those whom you love, living and departed, this day and for evermore. Amen. <laughs>